Welcome to part two of the forge welding sessions. And in this video, I will go over the mechanics of the drop tong weld, continuing on from part one, where I discussed forge welding. The principles of hammer penetration do not change. The type of metal is still mild steel, light to moderate blows, you want to use a welding temperature that is in the high end of the range to give yourself a little leg up. And the location of the blow leads us into a discussion on placement of the scarf and some additional forging that will need to take place in order to do a drop tongue weld. The location of the blow is still perpendicular to the welding plane. However, for a drop tong weld, you will need to position these two pieces together on the anvil and tap them before you lose too much heat. This maneuver can be a little bit tricky in that you need to calmly and confidently move to the point where they're together and ready to weld. By adding another element to your scarf, you can you can ensure your success. You don't want too long of an overlap for these two pieces. So by putting a small step in place, you can use that as an indices to prevent a long overlap. A long overlap can only serve to give you more space to entrap some debris that will cause your weld to fail or make it more difficult to get a nice, even, same color on your two pieces. Keep this step shallow so you don't create a shear plane in the middle of your piece. The second modification you'll need to make to your scarf for a drop tongue weld is to make sure that you have enough material in the neck before you start your weld so that you can stand to lose a little from the high heat scaling and possibly an errant hammer blow that would make this thinner. The goal is to have a seamless weld that is the same thickness as your parent stock. Starting a little bigger to begin with, it's going to give you some extra material that you can stand to lose. So the steps to create your scarf are add some thickness to the end of your bar, create your three sided taper that was discussed in part one of the, the forge welding videos and Lastly, create that step or that indices on the end of your anvil that allows you to line the two pieces up together with a short overlap. This last slide here is with everything in place, redefine the three-sided taper so that your scarfs are ready to go. So here are your two pieces scarfed and ready to be welded. Notice that the piece held by the tongs will start on the bottom and step up and they will be held in place by the longer bar held in your non-hammer hand. The scarf should match up nicely or your first blow won't be welding, it'll be getting those to match up. If you start with a nice fit up at the beginning, your first blow will be a welding blow. You're now ready to position your pieces and conduct your weld. These photos are showing this done before the pieces are heated and I would recommend that you do the same. The name drop tong is literal. The hammer hand, in this case a right-handed smith, is holding the tongs with the piece step up. So the smaller piece, step up. The longer piece is held in the material hand and will be fitted over the top and with some downward pressure hold this in place. Then you can drop your tongs 
pick up your hammer and conduct your weld. So let's look at what's happening on the anvil. To position these pieces so that they match up where you want them to, you're gonna need to steady them on the side of the anvil first. Drop the tong held piece onto the ant flat onto the anvil first step up and then with the other piece still anchored on the side maneuver it or position it into place so that these indices match up nicely then you can drop your tongs and pick up your hammer once this is held in place drop your tongs pick up your hammer with that same hand hit the top and then quickly follow this toe down and blend that in to your bottom piece. If you have time, turn it over, do the same on the other side. If you've lost color, or as soon as you lose color, you're gonna wanna put it back in the heat. So here is a color photo of two pieces heated to that high end of the welding temperature range and fitted together on the anvil. The thing that I want you to notice is that this welding temperature has a wet look to it. That is a clue that it's welding temperature. The parts on the edges here that are not welding temperature have a dry, crusty look. So position the two pieces on the anvil while you still have this color. Hit the top, follow down that toe. As long as you have welding temperature, turn it over. Do the same on the other side. Here are two pieces heated to different colors or different welding heats. Notice this looks wet, this looks wet, but they're not the same temperature. This actually initial, this, these two piece, pieces were initially welded, but then later they failed. You wanna make sure that both pieces are the same color when you conduct your weld. This photo is showing you two pieces that have had the initial weld stuck and then when you went to turn it you can see some loss of color here i want you to see this because the outer pieces from the area that's lost the color since it was on the anvil are still at a nice welding heat and this is quickly going to turn into that same welding heat as the heat goes into the cold area and you can continue to weld so here is a stuck weld with the first blow on top and then working down the toe to start blending that in. Turn it over as long as you have welding heat and do the same on the other side. Be careful that you have good hammer control so that you don't ding up these vulnerable surfaces as you work your weld. Notice that there's very little forging taking place at this point. And that's gonna continue with the second and maybe even the third heat. Each of those heats need to stay at that welding temperature or your weld could fail. The weld is gonna continue to strengthen anytime you have it at that welding temperature, whether or not you're applying pressure. Again, if you hit this too cold, it will cause the weld to fail. Once your weld is secure and you're sure of it, then you can start forging this piece. So you're now ready to try this out for yourself. The steps to welding are the same as in the part one video in that you heat your pieces to a welding temperature, brush off any scale or debris, flux them so that you can keep that surface clean, reheat that as quickly as possible, and then bring your pieces out to the anvil, position them and start your welding process. Pay attention to the color as you do this so that you can train your eye to a good welding heat and make sure it's an even heat. Practice is probably the one secret to forge welding in that you want to do this as many times as possible till you feel comfortable with the process. This is the end of part two on forge welding, and hopefully you're ready to go try this for yourself.